Welcome to Heritage Online. My name is Terry. I'm a member of the pastoral staff. Thank you for joining us for Heritage Worship. Though this is not our accustomed way of gathering on Sunday mornings, we're grateful for all the special efforts that have been made to make this time possible. Now, my advice to you, engage as fully as you can. Wherever you are, whatever device you're using to join us, engage fully. We're all in this together. So as Walter leads us in a couple of worship songs, sing fully. As Chela leads us in prayer, pray along with her. Listen and respond as Tim preaches. All of it. God is present. His spirit is working. May God's spirit release his people. The church was born for days like this. Is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark. But I am not forsaken For by my side The Savior He will stay I labor on In weakness and rejoicing For in my need His power is displayed To this I hold My shepherd will defend I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated, but Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released, I can sing. Bread, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this 
Yes, I hold my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. good to be with you. Let's pray together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. Almighty and everlasting God, you are our strength in these days of chaos and fear. You are our peace. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, who is ever present and whose power is made perfect in our weakness. We confess we are weak and we need you to still our hearts, to bring peace instead of fear and hope 
instead of despair. We come before you and ask you to make the weak strong, the sick healthy, the broken whole, and to empower and protect those serving on the front lines in this crisis. We ask you to grant mercy, relief, and peace to everyone in distress. Though countless in our world are lost in anxiety and fear, may they experience you and be comforted. Creator and sustainer of the world, we ask you to be at work in our local, provincial, national, and world leaders as they make critical decisions. We ask for your grace, wisdom, and strength to be upon those who are in the science labs doing research. May these brilliant minds, made in your image, find a solution quickly. God of compassion, you weave out of terrible happenings wonders of goodness and grace. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, not our ever-changing circumstances. We trust you, and we ask for your help to trust you with our livelihoods, our families, our hunger, with everything we are. Please root our faith in who you are. God of the universe, we ask your provision for those who are losing income. Give us strength of purpose and concern for others that we would give generously, work for justice, and pray unceasingly for those without hope. Jesus, it is a privilege to bear your name in these times. Help us to be your hands and feet, to be your calming presence as we turn to you, beacons of hope as we hope in you, and vessels of your love as we rest in your unfailing love. We ask these things in the powerful name of the risen Jesus. Amen. So the very first Star Wars movie ever released came out in 1977, and I was there. Yes, I'm that old. I was uh, in the movie theater with a few of my buddies. Uh, it was a great experience, uh, despite the fact that the movie projection uh, didn't quite work right. They couldn't automatically change the reels. They had to stop every 10 minutes to uh, put the new reel in. But nonetheless, it was a gripping movie. And in the film, uh, there's a scene where Obi-Wan Kenobi... Uh, Luke Skywalker and the two droids, C-3PO and R2-D2, get stopped by the bad guys, the stormtroopers. There's this huge threat. There's this moment of tension. And the stormtroopers say, let me see your identification. And Obi-Wan just kind of waves his hand and he says, you don't need to see his identification. The stormtrooper says, we don't need to see his identification. Obi-Wan says, these aren't the droids you're looking for. The stormtrooper says, these aren't the droids we're looking for. Obi-Wan says, he can go about his business. The stormtrooper says, he can go about his business. Obi-Wan says, move along. And the stormtrooper says, move along, move along. And the stormtroopers in that moment get completely disconnected from reality. They aren't connecting with things as they really are. And we, the audience, just cheer. <laughs> We're so glad because they're the bad guys. They're on the side of the evil empire, and we are so very glad they're missing the connections. And their experience is a riveting picture of what it means to actually be out of touch. So it is this issue, being out of touch and the desire to not be out of touch, instead to connect with reality. It's this issue that has led us as a church to state that one of our core values is this. We desire to be relevant. Now, the word relevant can make us a little nervous. So let me clarify. We are not talking about being trendy. To be trendy is to say that we are going to go along with whatever is in at the moment. It means that we shift chameleon-like in every aspect of our thinking, our convictions, our ethics, our worldview, to come in line with current trends. That's trendy. Instead, we want to be relevant, which is to say that we want to be well aware of what's going on around us, and in that, to stay connected with reality, to bring God's truth, the truth of Scripture, right up next to the current events, the current issues, the current ways of thinking. So to be trendy 
in thinking and behavior runs the risk of actually distorting Scripture and its meaning. But to be relevant embraces Scripture's truth and brings it up next to every aspect of life. So, with that in mind, let me state for you the scriptural basis for us wanting to be relevant, and here it is. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So, what this tells us is that Scripture in all of its parts finds its source in God Himself, which it must be said is a very, very, very solid foundation. That's a good place to be. And because Scripture finds its source in God, its rootedness in God, Scripture is useful. And it's useful, the verse says, in two ways. First, teaching and rebuking. These categories have to do with how we think, both positively and negatively. Positively, Scripture teaches. It it builds into our thinking new understanding that we need for health and wholeness. Negatively, it rebukes, taking out of our thinking those things that are unhelpful and wrong and untrue and unhealthy. And then secondly, Scripture is useful in that it is correcting and training. These categories have to do with how we behave. Again, negatively, and positively. Negatively, Scripture corrects us, turning us away from wrong behavior, and positively, it trains us, building us up, coaching us in the right ways to go to become more and more like Jesus. So, we want to be relevant as a congregation in these ways, to bring Scripture to bear on our thinking, adding more and more truth and taking away more and more falsehood, and bringing Scripture to bear on our behaving so that we're redirected when we get off track and we get shaped to be more and more like Jesus. So, if you're with me so far, I've got an assignment for you for this week. Would you please think about what it means for us to be relevant and think about one or two or three situations in which how we think and how we behave desperately in this time needs to be shaped by God's perspective from Scripture. So, these one or two or three things might be things that you, in fact, personally find it very, very difficult to know what it means to to really, truly be connected with reality. And these would be topics or themes or issues or situations in which you want to embrace clear thinking and clear behaving. And so, if you've got those one or two or three things, if you would please not only reflect on them personally, but if you would put them into an email to me. And we're going to take them and we're going to reflect on them, and some of them are going to form the basis for our preaching series later in the spring, okay? So, to take seriously to be relevant, this is what we want to do. Now, shifting gears. I want to shift gears and apply this principle of being relevant to our current situation, COVID-19. The whole world is mobilizing watching uh, this unfolding crisis. And as this has unfolded, governments very rightly have taken very bold steps to to do what they can to to minimize and to mitigate and to to contain uh, the impact of this encroaching threat. In Canada, over this last week or so, very decisive things have happened. And daily, it seems, over the last number of days, there's been a new directive, uh, a new uh, uh, information, new guidelines about what's happening and how we are to respond. So, on the CBC National News last weekend, I was watching, and the news anchor, Ian Hanamansing, made what was an obvious but I think very, very insightful comment that we are dealing here not only with the onslaught of a virus, but we are dealing with the onslaught of fear. And so, I want to take the Scripture today and apply it to the reality of this moment and apply it to the very real fear that is gripping our world. And to do that, I want to take us to the upper room on the night before the cross. Jesus and His disciples are there. They're reclining around the table. Uh, They've had bread. They've had wine. Jesus has washed their feet. The disciples don't exactly know what's coming, but they do have this growing sense that something foreboding is in the works. Jesus is talking about going away, 
And it's beginning to look like the future is going to be very, very different in a slightly ominous way from their point of view. Fear is being birthed around that table. And into that gut-churning mix, Jesus speaks what I've got to say is a very, very common word today and a very common word back then, but it is loaded and packed with power. Packed with power for that moment and packed with power for this moment. And the word is simply the word peace. John 14, verse 27 says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. And we might immediately turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, that's easy for you to say. But, of course, it wasn't easy for him to say because he knew exactly what was happening next. He knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that on the cross he was going to bear on his own shoulders the weight of the sin and the wrongdoing and the brokenness of all time and all space, of all humanity everywhere. And it is because of that burden that he would bear on the cross and because of the work that was done there that he can speak this word. Later, right at the end of that evening, the reflections that he gave, he uses the word again. Here it is, John 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So peace is is one of the very last words that Jesus speaks to his disciples before he goes to the cross. He must have known that they needed it. He must have known that we needed it. And then the cross happened. And then the resurrection happened. And then when Jesus meets his disciples again, alive from the dead, meets them on that first day of the week in that upper room where they're, they're locked in because of their fear, and he makes himself present to them once again, the very first thing he says to them, he guessed it, peace be with you. So now for us, all of our experience, whether it's right in this moment with COVID-19 or before, All of our experience is on this side of the cross. It's on this side of the resurrection. All of Jesus' work, bearing our sin, conquering death, all of that is fully completed. It is accomplished. And so here's the point, here's the key to this promised peace. Jesus said to his disciples, in me you may have peace. In me. That's the key. What we need, like the disciples on that first day of the week, is Jesus' presence right with us. And it's in connection with him that we have access to peace. In me, you have peace. Even now, especially now. So now, in the mix of all the things that Jesus said in that upper room before he went to the cross, uh, Jesus also gave them a very powerful picture that illustrates this in me situation. John 15, he says, remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. So it's by connecting with him, staying connected with him, just like a branch is connected with the vine, living in that place just like a branch lives in the vine, drawing life from him just like the branch draws life from the vine. That's the place where life flow, that, that's the place where peace is accessed. And so we do this actually by presenting ourselves with the one who is present with us. Uh, Jesus has said, in me you may have peace, and uh, the call to us is to actually take time to be in his presence, which means that in this time, maybe when uh, the schedules are cleared and we're stuck at home, especially in this time, take the time daily to be with him. Take the time to open the Bible and to to read it and and to allow his word, uh, him himself, to speak into mind and into heart, uh, to change our thinking and to change our behaving. Take the time to, to meditate and reflect on what you read and what you hear. Take the time to pray. And then, having connected with him, live in that connection during the day. 
Don't put it aside. Engage. In me, you may have peace, Jesus says. In me. That's the key. So in this present crisis, I've got to say that we as a congregation will have many things that we can do and many things that we can do for each other. There's going to be many ways um, <laughs> at a distance, uh, but we're going to have to jump in and, and, and reach out and help one another. But it's got to come out of this place first of being in relationship with Jesus. Because if we are not in relationship with Jesus first, we have nothing to offer one another or to the world. So I um, noticed in the Vancouver Sun on Thursday that the whole front page was taken up with a quote from Adrian Dix, who is the BC Minister of Health. And what he says is, it's not too late to join the fight. We are asking you to take part today to take your civic responsibility. And what he was saying, and what he is saying, and what the need is, is that each of us, uh, this battle is going to be fought from a multitude of individual hands. And it's only as each person engages in social distancing and uh, good hand hygiene and covering coughs and sneezes, staying home if sick, it's only as each individual does this that the effect of the virus has any hope of being minimized. And in the same way, but much, much more profoundly, it is in each of our hands to connect with Jesus for our own good, yes, but actually also for the good of brothers and sisters around us and the world around us. Because we together in this season desperately need peace. The source of peace is in me. You may have peace. And what the world around us desperately needs is the peace that Jesus offers. And I would have to say that in this, we have the opportunity to be profoundly relevant. Let me pray for us. So dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you who are the peace came so that we might experience your peace. And on that night, before you went to the cross, you knew where you were going. The disciples didn't, but they were troubled. They were unsettled. And you spoke to them words of comfort, captured in this one powerful word, peace. In me, you may have peace. And Lord Jesus, we pray that uh, we who have received your uh, forgiveness and your salvation, who have received the, the goodness and the uh, release of your cross, that we in this season might step into deeper relationship with you, that we might access the peace that you have won for us and that you long to pour out on us. And Lord, would you allow us to be channels of your peace in this time, in this place, in this world. To your name and glory we pray. Amen. Amen. Good words for us today. Yeah, these are unusual times, but they're also unequaled in our opportunity to reach people in their confusion, in caring for them, and in crisis. We, the church, we were made for this. The church throughout history has been effective in tough times, in trying circumstances. We come to the plate. Folks, this is Heritage Alliance's wheelhouse. We're good at personally connecting and caring for people, expressing care. We may be experiencing physical isolation, but remember, we are not spiritually isolated. We face challenges together, and it's always better together. One of our current and immediately pressing needs at Heritage is in our finances and giving. Even though we're not currently meeting as a large group in this facility here on Mount Lehman, our financial needs persist as a church. The first quarter of the year is typically a low ebb of giving, but coupled with our inability to receive our weekly offerings and Sunday services, um, we have a now a pronounced need and increased 
need for ongoing financial support. Our monthly need is currently about $60,000 per month going until the end of the year. By last week, we were about halfway to that goal for the month of March. We need you to apply your creativity and intention for regular giving to Heritage. You could drop off your offerings at the church office between 9 a.m. 3 p.m. Tuesday to Friday. You can give online through uh, PayPal, through an e-transfer, through setting up in your bank as a payee, or you could drop your offerings and tithes in the mail. This is a challenge that we can live up to, folks. Heritage people are a generous people in many ways. That's who you are. That's who we are. This way of doing church together is new for us. We're exploring different ways to connect and help us grow and grow together uh, online. So for the foreseeable future, this venue will be our corporate gatherings each Sunday or whenever you watch this on your device. This will be our corporate gathering place. You'll have access online to a Heritage Worship at Week liturgy or other children's resources online. It will be one or more ways that you can go deeper, but also a starting point for you to gather with your friends or other people when online groupings in whatever platform you use. As we rebuild our website and explore different ways of creating a greater online presence and connections across generations, we're inviting you to keep visiting and then bring us feedback. We need that from you. So to finish off today, we want to leave you with a blessing. And it comes from part of St. Patrick's Prayer. So, people, a word for you today. As a blessing for you. Christ with you. Christ before you. Christ behind you. Christ on your right side. Christ on your left. Christ in you. Christ beneath you. Christ when you lie down. Christ when you sit down. Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of you. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of you. Christ in the eye of everyone who sees you. Christ in the ear of everyone that hears you. Amen. Go in peace.